Hi, boys and girls. It's Peach Baby Bob, and I'm back with another great story. Today's book is called Bedtime for Francis. It was written by Russell Hoban, and the pictures were made by Garth Williams. It's the story of a little, I think it's a badger, and uh, the badger is Francis, and Francis does not want to go to sleep. And I'm sure you or me or other people that you know don't really like bedtime sometimes, and they just don't want to go to sleep. But Francis tries really hard not to go to sleep, not to go to bed, and her father and her mother explain to her that everyone has a job. Everyone. And see if you can uh, figure out what Francis's job is in this story. I know you're going to like it. Enjoy. Bedtime for Francis. Words by Russell Hoban. Pictures by Garth Williams. The big hand of the clock is at 12. The little hand is at 7. It is 7 o'clock. It is bedtime for Francis. Mother said, it's time for bed. Father said, it's time for bed. Francis said, I want a glass of milk. All right, said father. All right, said mother. You may have a glass of milk. Francis drank the milk. Carry me to my room, father, said Francis. All right, said father. Piggyback, said Francis. So father carried her piggyback to her room. Father kissed Francis goodnight. Mother kissed Francis goodnight. Francis said, may I sleep with my teddy bear? Father gave her the teddy bear. Francis said, may I sleep with my doll too? Mother gave her the doll. Good night, said father. Good night, said mother. Did you kiss me, said Francis? Yes, said mother. Yes, said father. Kiss me again, said Francis. Father kissed her again, mother kissed her again. They closed the door. May I have my door open, said Francis. Father opened the door. Good night, said mother. Good night, said father. Good night, said Francis. Francis couldn't sleep. She closed her eyes, but she still couldn't sleep. So she began to sing a little song about the alphabet. She made it up as she went along. It went something like this. A is for apple pie, B is for bear, C is for crocodile combing his hair, D is for dumplings. Francis kept singing through E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, and R, and she had no trouble until she got near the end of the alphabet. S is for sailboat, T is for tiger, U is for underwear down in the dryer. Francis stopped because dryer did not sound like tiger. She started to think about tigers. She thought about big tigers and little tigers, baby tigers and mothers and fathers tigers, sister tigers and brother tigers, aunt tigers and uncle tigers. I wonder if there are any tigers around here, she said. Frances looked around her room. She thought maybe she saw a tiger in the corner. She wasn't afraid, but she wanted to be sure. So Frances looked again. She was sure she could see a tiger. She went to tell her mother and father. There's a tiger in my room, said Francis. Did he bite you, said father. No, said Francis. Did he scratch you, said mother. No, said Francis. Then he must be a friendly tiger, said father. He will not hurt you. Go back to sleep. Do I have to, said Francis. Yes, said father. Uh, yes, said mother. Well, father kissed Francis, mother kissed Francis, and Francis went back to bed and finished her song on the way, and then she closed her eyes, but not for long. She could not sleep. Francis opened her eyes and she looked around. She saw something big and dark. Giants are big and dark, she thought. Maybe that's a giant. I think I see a giant. I think that giant wants to get me. She went down to the living room. Mother and father were watching television and having tea and cake. Francis said, there's a giant in my room. May I watch television with you? No, said mother. No, said father. Francis said, the giant wants to get me. May I have some cake? 
Father gave Francis a piece of cake. Father said, how do you know he wants to get you? Francis said, isn't that what giants do? Father said, not always. Why don't you ask the giant what he wants? Frances went back to her room. She went right over to the giant and she said, What do you want, giant? Frances took a good look at the giant. It was no giant. It was just a chair and her bathrobe. So she went to bed again. Frances was not very tired and did not close her eyes this time. She looked up at the ceiling. There was a crack in the ceiling and she thought about it for a long time. Maybe something will come out of that crack, she thought. Maybe bugs or spiders, maybe something with a lot of skinny legs in the dark. Frances went to get her father. He was brushing his teeth. Frances said, something scary is going to come out of the crack in the ceiling in my bedroom. I forgot to brush my teeth. Father said, you brush your teeth and I'll go have a look. Frances brushed her teeth, brushed her teeth, and then Father came back and said, nothing could come out of such a little crack. But if you're still worried about that, get somebody to help you watch. You can take turns. Frances told her teddy bear to watch the crack. They took turns for a while, and then Frances got tired of it and let Teddy do all the watching. Frances got up and went to the bathroom. When she came back, she was not sleepy at all. The window was open and the wind was blowing the curtains. I don't like the way those curtains are moving, said Frances. Maybe there's something waiting, very soft and quiet. Maybe it moves the curtains just to see if I'm watching. She went into her mother and father's bedroom to tell them. Frances's father and mother were asleep. She stood by father's side of the bed very quietly, right near his head. She was so quiet that she was the quietest thing in the room. She was so quiet that father woke up all of a sudden. What? He said. Francis said, There's something moving the curtains in my bedroom. May I sleep with you, please? Father said, Listen, Francis, do you know why the curtains are moving? Why? said Francis. That is the wind's job, said Father. Every night the wind has to go around and blow all the curtains. How can the wind have a job, said Francis. Everybody has a job, said Father. I have to go to my office every morning. That's my job. You have to go to sleep so you can get up and go to school and be wide awake and do really well. That's your job. Your mother, she has to get up and do all the work around the house. That's her job. We all have jobs. I'm not finished. Now listen, if the wind does not blow the curtains, the wind will be out of a job. If I don't go to the office, I'll be out of a job. If your mother doesn't do the work around here, she'll be out of a job. And you need to go to sleep too, because if you don't, you'll be out of a job. I will, said Francis. Well, not really. You'll just get a spanking. Oh, said Francis. Right, said Father. Now, good night. Frances went back to her room. She closed the window and got into bed. And then she heard the noise. Thump, bump, thump. It was at the window. I know something will get me this time, she thought. Frances decided to go and tell her mother and father one more time. As she approached the door, she changed her mind. She jumped back into bed. She pulled the covers over her head and she listened. And she could hear thump, thump, thump. I don't know what it is. Is it something really bad? Father will have to come and chase it away. She pulled the covers up tighter over her head. And then she looked at the window. It was a moth. A silly old moth bumping up against the window. The thumping and the bumping and the smacking at the glass and the whacking made Frances think of a spanking. And all of a sudden, she was tired. So she lay down and closed her eyes and tried to think of good thoughts. Francis, wake up. Your breakfast is ready. Well, did you like the story? Were you afraid? Did it remind you of when you go to bed? Did you figure out what Francis's job is? Because you know, 
you have a job too. See you next time.